Amen. We have two passages on this Christ the King Sunday. We're going to hear first from near the beginning of Luke, and you would think that these words were being said about Jesus, but this is about another baby. It's a baby John the Baptist, and these words come from the mouth of Zechariah, and they're the first words that Zechariah has said in several long months. And the great benefactor of Zechariah's mute period is, of course, Elizabeth, his wife. Yeah, 8.30 didn't get it either. Yeah, so he, he was struck mute, you see, because he didn't believe that God would give them this child who became John the Baptist, right? Uh, so what happens is Elizabeth doesn't have to listen to him complain for five, six, seven months. And then when they go to the naming ceremony, which in this culture at this time would be on the eighth day, the baby's eight days old and they're going to give him a name and it should be something like Zachariah. His friends said they wanted to make him a junior, but his mom said, no, it's John. And they wouldn't listen to her. And so they asked Zachariah and he wrote it down on a tablet. He said, his name is John. And at that point, the Holy Spirit moved and opened his mouth and he could speak. And you know what he said? This is what he said. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for He has looked favorably on His people. He has redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of His servant David, as He spoke through the mouth of His holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who would hate us. Thus He has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered His holy holy covenant. God has remembered us. The oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might then serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. And you, child, you will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord and you will, you will prepare His ways and you will give knowledge of salvation to His people by the forgiveness of their sins and by the tender mercy of our God. The dawn from on high will break upon all of us to give light to those who sit in darkness and those who sit in the shadow of death even. They shall have light to guide our feet in the way of peace. And after Zechariah's song of praise to God, we skip all the way on this Christ the King Sunday to the very end of Jesus' life. He's on the cross. And this is Luke chapter 23. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there. They crucified him with criminals, one on his right and one on his left hand. And then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The same people that Jesus was praying God's forgiveness for sat there ignoring him and taking his clothing and casting lots to divide it. And the people stood by watching, and the leaders of the people scoffed at Jesus, and they said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he's the Messiah of God, if he is the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him. They came up and they offered him sour wine to drink. And they said, if you're the king of the Jews, why don't you save yourself? They took an inscription on a placard and they put it above his head and it said, this is the king of the Jews as he hung there on the cross. And then one of the criminals who was hanging there beside him also joined in and was deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Why don't you save yourself? And while you're at it, save us. But the other criminal that was up there, he rebuked the first one and he said, Do you not fear God, 
since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly. For we're getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man, he's done nothing wrong. And then that same man turned to Jesus and said, Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied to him, Truly I tell you today, Today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and may the meditation of all our hearts today be pleasing to you. It's been said that along this journey that we're on, and we've been talking about journeys the last couple, three weeks, this journey that we're on is full of fear. And anyone that says they've never been afraid is lying. But spiritual teachers tell us that once you get through the fear, on the other side, somewhere over there, on the other side of fear is freedom. And the way through is faith. That's the whole sermon. On the other side of fear, there's freedom. And the way through is faith. I got to have faith in something bigger than me. I need to have faith. Can I have faith in Jesus? I need to have faith in God to draw me along the journey, to show me the path, to show me the place where I need to place my feet every step of the way so that I know how to go about this thing because I'm afraid. We're all, we're all afraid. It's normal for us to be afraid. But Zechariah prophesies this word of the Lord that the people won't live in fear any longer. And he says John is coming to be a prophet of the Lord and he's going to prepare the way and he's going to show the people the way to salvation. And salvation doesn't mean saved, it means healing. He's going to show us the way to healing. And what John did to show the way to healing was baptism. He dunked the people all the way in the water. He didn't just sprinkle them like we do. I can't believe I'm saying that in a Presbyterian church. Am I, am I saying the Baptist got it right? Well, it's a good, if you're going to, why don't you go ahead and dunk? Lord, all of me, right? But that's what John the Baptist did. Because he was, he was radical that way. But the people needed it. Peter says that to the Lord, right? He says, God, wash all of me. But Jesus says to Peter, he says, no, just your feet. He does this act of washing Peter's feet. Imagine if you were there and Jesus was washing your feet. How would you feel? I think you'd feel unworthy, wouldn't you? That's the way Peter feels. So imagine if you were up there on the cross. We're up there. We got the guy on this side. You got Jesus in the middle. And then you have the guy over on this side. And out of fear, the first one on Jesus' right is saying, I'm afraid to die. I don't want to be up here. The end is near. So he lashes out like an animal would when they're backed into a corner and it's near the end. And he says, if you're the Messiah, save yourself. And while you're at it, save me too. Save us. What are you doing up here? He can't help it. He starts insulting Jesus. Giving up any chance he may have had of being saved, as it were. The other one has his wits about him a little bit more. More than having his wits about him, he knows deep in his heart that they're just there so that Jesus is known to have died among criminals, thieves. He says, this man doesn't deserve this. Jesus, remember me. Jesus, remember us. We come before the mercy seat every Sunday asking the same prayer that any common thief would ask. Jesus, remember us. Jesus, have mercy on us. Oh, God, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
on our souls. Because we know that no one, no one deserves to get out alive. <laughs> You know, I think about the person on the right side, and it would be as though it would be as though I was standing in sewage up above my waist, and you came by, and I said, "You got a you you need to wash your face. You got a little spot here." <laughs> and Jesus tells us that over and over again, doesn't he? I like the the King James version when earlier in his teaching he says. Why are you worried about the speck in your neighbor's eye when you've got a beam coming out of your own? It's like, can you imagine a two-by-four sticking in somebody's eye? It's that ridiculous. That's why I talk about standing in sewage or having a two-by-four sticking out of my eye. And I'm here telling you that you're bad because you've got a little, you know, something right, right here. Just wipe it. <laughs> and that's what we do. I'm guilty of it. Because I'm afraid, I act like the first criminal. When I should be saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. John comes and he, he does these things. He, he prepares the way. He teaches us about salvation and what it means to be healed. He tells us to be baptized. But he also says that this way is a way of peace. Jesus brings something different. He brings, a, it's a whole new way of engaging the world. It's nonviolent. And we can have faith in this God who says that amid all of your violence against one another, I'm going to come and be an emissary for peace. And I'm even going to hang here on the cross. And as you're deriding me, I'm going to say, forgive them for they know not what they do. We have sins we don't even know about. We're ignorant of some of the things that we've done. And so we get this life now from this day forward to, to make up for it. Can I make up for it? Can I save myself? No. Christ does that because it's the faith that's going to get me through the fear that gets me to the freedom. But I'll know it when I see it. And when you overcome a little bit of fear, you feel it, don't you? You have a sense of freedom. You've had it in your life before. You've known and you've said, thank God, what is this? I can breathe again. What's happened? And it's because you set something down, a burden that you were carrying around, and what that burden was was sin. It might not even have been your own. You may have been carrying somebody else's burdens around because we do that. We might carry our children's sins around or our friends. We might take that on ourselves because... Because we don't know any better. And we think we're doing it for the right reasons. But guess what? Jesus already died on the cross. You don't have to. So some of us will go so far as to try to act like Jesus and nail ourselves to a cross. But you don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to act like that anymore. Because the promise is this freedom. Jesus came so we might have life and have it more abundantly. Why do I know this? Because without hesitating, Jesus turns to me and Jesus turns to you and we hope we're that one and we are. We're both of them. <laughs> but we are the one on Jesus' left hand that says, Jesus, remember me. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And without hesitation, Jesus says, today, today, not in the sweet by and by, not after some age to come, some apocalyptic thing or another, but today you will be with me. Today you are with me in paradise. Friends, our freedom is at hand. 
And because Christ is the King, Christ can say this. Because Christ is Lord and Savior, Christ can say this. Because Christ was sent by God to show us the way, a way of peace, I might add, that's Christ's credentials. And Christ gives us freedom, not down the road, but today. So in this season of gratitude, let us give thanks for our freedom. Let us say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say it with me. Thank you, Lord. Amen.